Welcome to our presentation of using habit reversal to decrease filled pauses in public speaking. Many people struggle with the concept of public speaking and the anxious behaviors that ensue in the presence of an audience. This anxiety can produce a multitude of nervous habits that may hinder the speaker's ability to effectively deliver their speech. Existing research has focused on the reduction of public speaking anxiety rather than providing examples to teach the proper skills needed to communicate effectively in the public setting. This study used a habit reversal intervention and awareness training to help the speaker become more mindful of their own behaviors. The specific behaviors targeted include filled pauses, tongue clicking, and the inappropriate use of like or so. After baseline, participants experienced awareness training and competing response training. During the post-intervention assessment, all participants decreased the amount of habits per minute. Speaking in front of an audience can be anxiety provoking and can lead to unwanted mistakes in your presentation of the topic at hand. In an article by Mancuso and Milton Berger, 2015, anxiety can cause a speaker to reduce filled pauses that can cause a disruption of, in the flow of speech that can decrease the credibility of a speaker. Fryman, 2014 notes, the importance of speaking effectively even along, alongside the fear of public speaking. Habit reversal can aid in increasing public communication skills by decreasing field pauses. According to Spieler and Miltenberger, 2017, it has been successful in managing behaviors such as tics, stuttering, and nervous habits. This management provides the speaker with a more effective way of speaking. Wiskow and Klatt, 2013, reported that habit reversal has been successful when it utilizes awareness training and competing response training. By becoming more aware of your own disruptive habits, you can notice when they're about to occur and prevent them from happening. The significance of this study was to decrease filled pauses that occur while speaking publicly by using habit reversal. What exactly was the purpose of this study, as well as this project? Well, the purpose of this study in particular is to decrease filled pauses that occur while speaking publicly by the use of habit reversal. When deciding on this project, we all came to the agreement that we had some sort of desire to improve our public speaking skills. Also, all five of the participants rated our public speaking as average or below average before starting this study making this study a great one to replicate for all of us. The participants in our study replication included five female graduate students and one researcher who was also a female graduate student. Each of the participants in our study replication are a part of an online master's degree program from Ball State University, and we are all currently in our fourth semester. The participants included Stephanie, 23 from Ohio, Kimberly, 26 from Louisiana, Jeannie, 26 from Wisconsin, Lauren, 25 from, from Louisiana, and Ashley, 29 from Louisiana. The re researcher in our replication study was Dominique, 26 from Texas. The materials needed for this study were computers, list of topics. The speech topics included 25 general topics, such as first job, favorite vacations, best friends, et cetera, or 22 topics relating to applied behavior analysis, a timer to track the duration of speeches, and a copy of Applied Behavior Analysis Second Edition from Cooper, Heron, and Heron, 2007. Additionally, the researcher needed writing utensils and a behavior recording form for recording the frequency data. All participants in the study replication used a computer, a Google account, and a Zoom account to share information regarding speeches, to collect data, and conduct meetings with other group members. Our behavior definition looked at filled pauses. Filled pauses can be defined as a nonsense syllable such as um, er, ah, or er noises produced from tongue clicking 
or a pause filler such as like or so. Tongue clicking occurs when a speaker places his or her tongue on the roof of their mouth with pressure. The speaker then releases the pressure, which makes an audible noise. An example would include words such as so and like. A non-example of using a pause filler, like, would be if the speaker uses the word when making a comparison. Data was collected based upon behavior definitions of target behavior seen in speech video recordings. A frequency tally was used to track these behaviors within a 15 second interval of recording period for each speech. From the 15 second intervals, the rate per minute was then calculated. This is an example of the data collection sheet that we used. A non-concurrent multiple baseline design across participants was used in the study replication as well as the original study to evaluate the effectiveness of habit reversal in reducing filled pauses in public speaking. The phases of this study include baseline, habit reversal, which is composed of awareness training and competing response training, and post-intervention assessment. During baseline, each participant met individually with the researcher via Zoom. At the start of the meeting, the researcher went over the schedule for the day, as well as provided the participant with two topics to choose from for the speech. The participant then chose a topic and had 10 minutes to prepare and create an outline for the three to five minute speech. Each participant was allowed to use the reference or was allowed to reference their outline during their speech. During the five minute speech, the researcher signaled to the participant when one minute remained or if the participants attempted to end the speech before 15 or attempt to end the speech before the three to five minute mark or a pause occurred in speaking for more than 15 seconds, the researcher would say, please continue. Speeches were ended when they reached the three to five minute mark. During this phase, the researcher provided no feedback during or after the speech and did not respond to any of the target behaviors. All of our baseline data collections occurred over Zoom at the time, the time assigned for each participant and were recorded by the researcher. During awareness training, each participant met individually with the researcher, again via Zoom. During this individual meeting, the participant and the researcher discussed the topography of the target behavior, such as response description. Also during the meeting, the participant also practiced detecting the target behavior from a three minute clip of the baseline speeches, which was considered response detection. Next, the participant practiced identifying the target behaviors while giving a speech with identical preparations as the baseline procedure. The researcher informed the participant before her speech to raise her right hand each time she engaged in any of the target behaviors and to raise her left hand when she became aware that she was about to engage in a target behavior. The researcher also engaged in hand raising behavior to help aid the participant's awareness. The participant used the same speech throughout all awareness training. Awareness training was deemed effective either when the participant identified 100% of the occurrences of the target behavior in a single speech, or when the participant identified at least 80% of the occurrences of the target behavior in two consecutive speeches. Once awareness training was deemed effective, the participants moved on to competing response training. During competing response training, the researcher provided two new topics for the participant to choose from. Before the speech, the researcher also provided examples of the competing responses for the target behavior for their participant to practice and stated that she would prompt the participant to use this competing response if she engaged in the target behavior within two seconds. For example, instead of saying ah, um, or er, the participant would engage in a three second pause. Instead of tongue clicking, the participant would hold the tongue to the roof of the mouth for three seconds. If the participant added a filler word, such as like or so, the participant must restate the sentence without that filler word. The competing response training was deemed effective when the participant presented a speech and exhibited an 80% reduction in the target behaviors from their baseline mean. 
The final phase is post-intervention. Post-intervention assessment took place for the participants no more than three days after the completing response training was completed. This phase was identical to baseline conditions. The participants were given two topics to choose from and had to provide a three to five minute speech. And also the researcher provided no feedback during or after the speech and did not respond to any of the target behaviors. Post-intervention assessment was then considered effective if the participant showed at least a 75% decrease from her baseline mean. If the participant did not exhibit at least 75% decrease from her baseline mean, the, during two consecutive sessions, the researcher then provided a booster session. None of our participants in this replication study needed booster sessions. Also, due to time restriction, a follow-up assessment did not occur two to five weeks after the last post-intervention assessment, as in the original study. Prior to calculating inter-observer agreement, one participant was trained by the researcher to identify occurrences of target behaviors using original baseline session video recordings. Target behavior identification training concluded when the participant identified at least 90% of target behaviors across two video clips. IOA was collected on identification of target behaviors and treatment fidelity. IOA was collected for 33% of all sessions in baseline and post-intervention phases using a frequency within interval agreement method. Percentage of agreement per interval was calculated by dividing the smaller frequency count by the larger frequency count, then multiplying it by 100. Intervals considered to be in total agreement were represented as 100%. Afterwards, the percentages from each interval were added together then divided by the total number of intervals to create our IOA data. IOA was 100% across all participants and all phases. An intervention checklist was completed by the researcher at the end of each session and by the participant assisting with IOA data as she watched the video recordings. This checklist outlines the steps of awareness training and competing response training and was used as a guideline to ensure that the intervention was being implemented consistently across all participants. The boxes next to each step were checked off if the step was implemented correctly and was left blank if it was not. As in the original study, implementation fidelity was assessed for 33% of all awareness training and competing response training sessions. This was calculated by dividing the number of steps implemented by the total number of steps in the checklist. Implementation fidelity was 100% across all participants and phases. This is what our intervention checklist looked like. The results of using habit reversal in public speaking showed a drastic decrease in the rate of filled pauses for all five participants, as you can see in the graph here. Now, if we look at the table, we can see the participants average a moderate rate of 4.5 behavior, 4.5 habits per minute during the baseline phase. This ranged from 0.9 to 8.9. Again, looking at the table, during the post-intervention assessment, all the participants decreased the amount of habits per minute by 89% to an average of about 0.4 habits per minute. This ranged from 0.0 to 0 0.9. All five of the participants demonstrated an immediate decrease in the use of filled pauses upon entering the intervention phase. Because all of the participants maintained low rates of engaging in the target behaviors throughout the post-intervention assessment session, none of the participants were required to participate in booster sessions. In looking at each participant's data, it showed that Kimberly decreased her filled pauses by 96%, Ashley by 93%, Stephanie by 86%, Jeannie by 90%, and Lauren by 80%. Now let's look at each individual participant's graph a little bit closer. First is my graph. During my baseline, I had the highest rate, of, rate per minute of all the participants. My average was about 8.1 habits per minute, ranging from 7.2 to 8.9. After habit reversal, habit reversal, my post-intervention assessment average decreased by 
to about 0.3 habits per minute, ranging from 0.1 to 0.4. As you can see, habit reversal was extremely effective to decrease my use of filled pauses during public speaking. Now let's look at Ashley's graph. In baseline, I ranged from 3.7 to 4.5 habits per minute, averaging around 4.2 habits per minute. During post-intervention, I ranged from 0.0, .0 to 0 0.6, with an average of 0 0.3, with an overall 93% decrease in my use of field pauses during public speaking. Up next, let's look at Stephanie's. My baseline range was from 3.8 to 6.6 .6 habits per minute, an overall average of about five habits per minute. My post-intervention range was from 0.4 to 0.9, with an overall average of 0.7. As you notice, there's a slight descending trend during my baseline phase before intervention, which could be attributed, attributed to my awareness of my filled pauses. Overall, I showed an 86% decrease in my use of filled pauses during public speaking. I thought that habit reversal was very effective for me and has helped prepare me for future public speaking. Now let's look at Jeannie's graph. My baseline ranged from 2.0 to 5.1 habits per minute. My baseline average was 3.1. Post-intervention ranged from 0.2 to 0.5 habits, while post-intervention average was 0.3. This intervention of habit reversal was 90% effective in decreasing um, filled pauses in my target behavior. <laughs> now let's take a look at Lauren's graph. My baseline range was between 0.9 and 3.6 with an average of two instances per minute. My post-intervention range was between 0.1 and 0.5 with an average of 0.4. There seems to be a decreasing trend in baseline, which could be an indication that I may have become more aware of my filled pauses even before implementing the awareness training. And overall, there was an 80% decrease in my use of filled pauses during public speaking. Each participant filled out two different social validity surveys. A five-point Likert type scale was used to score both of them. One of the surveys asked five questions related to how they felt about their own individual public speaking abilities and confidence levels. This survey was completed twice, once before habit reversal and again after the final post-intervention assessment. The initial results from this survey indicated that each of the participants perceived their public speaking abilities as in between average and below average. The participants' confidence levels ranged between not confident at all to somewhat confident. The results from the second completion of this survey demonstrated an increase in ratings for public speaking abilities and confidence levels and a decrease in the frequency for the use of nonsense syllables. There was no significant change in levels of anxiety and comfort, as the results from each self-rating survey ranged from feeling very anxious to somewhat anxious, and not feeling comfortable to feeling somewhat comfortable for all participants. The second survey consisted of six questions and required participants to rate the overall acceptability feasibility and effectiveness of the intervention implemented in the study. The results from the intervention survey showed that each of the participants were very willing to participate and like this study. The general consensus amongst the participants was that habit reversal is an acceptable, feasible, and very effective intervention for decreasing the use of filled pauses during public speaking. While conducting our study replication, we came upon multiple limitations. The first limitation our group found was the use of replicators also being research participants. As the replicators also being participants, there was greater knowledge about the process of the study, such as what each treatment component 
was along with the criteria for moving on to the next phase. This could have skewed the treatment effectiveness and validity of the replication. Additionally, the participant's awareness to displaying the target behavior can be seen as a limitation. An example of this is shown in Stephanie's baseline points as well as Lauren's. These baseline points for these participants went on a downward trend before the intervention started, which could be attributed to the awareness of their filled pauses and knowing that they needed to decrease these instances. Our study replication, as well as one conducted by Miltenberger, Farquhar, and Woods in 1998 indicated that the behaviors being treated with habit reversal are defined topographically rather than functionally. This could have played a part in the true effectiveness of the intervention. Another limitation discovered by our group during the study replication was having to present speeches via video technology instead of in-person and face-to-face. -face. The participants of the original study conducted all phases of the intervention directly with the researcher while being recorded by videotaping. Technology glitches and lags in streaming could have impacted the presentations of the replicators. Additionally, our study replication in our study replication, we did not receive $10 for attending all scheduled ses sessions as the participants in the original research study did. This could have decreased the motivation in replication study participants because they were not receiving reinforcement of money by engaging in all scheduled sessions. Also, some participants could have more experiences with public speaking and therefore be more skilled in their presentations prior to the intervention. Additionally, our study did not include a follow-up assessment due to time constraints. And finally, our replication lacked the scientific rigor of a true scientific experiment replication. These are the references used for the completion of this project. Thank you for listening to our presentation on using habit reversal to decrease filled pauses.